my, our first example, I remember when he first, he came over to visit Retro. This is when we had the first prototype of Prime running. We had some of the, uh, uh, the uh, Space Pirate Frigate at the start of the game. And he play tested it. And I remember him, in the first five minutes, he named like a dozen things that should be fixed and they were all right. You know, like the scale feeling of Samus and, you know, some of the control stuff. And he just, you could just tell that he knew exactly what he was talking about and just, you know, brilliant, brilliant designer. So were you aware of some of this stuff before he pointed it out and you just hadn't gotten around to fixing it? Or was it a fact that he pointed it out and then you were like, oh, I think it's a little of both. Mm. Um, I think his, his comments on scale, I don't think we were thinking about because uh, uh, when we originally designed level, Samus was a little, the camera's a little lower. And he said that he, the first thing he said is you need to make Samus taller. Like you need to scale the world down. Right. And if in the, I'm thinking game, the actual camera height is like two meters. Right. Which is right. I think if you look at the suit, I think it's the suit's supposed to be about two meters tall. And he picked up on that immediately. And so it was just interesting to, to, to see that. It's like working with Yoda, I think, especially when we're working with the Miyamoto time, because uh, he was uh, very sage like in his wisdom. And he had just like this ability to play through a demo level that we showed him and just key in on all the, the things that, that stuck out to him or that, that he thought could have been better. And it was actually kind of rare that he would comment on audio. Um, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but um, I remember one of the one of the, remember one of the moments that I always remember is at the beginning of the intro level at the in the hangar. Uh, there's like this ambient tone uh, that that kind of plays in the background as you're as you after you land your your ship. And this was sort of, this was one of the first things that we had shown to Nintendo as like a, a first sort of vertical slice of the game. And I wasn't sure if like the ambiences were going to really sell uh, the audio or not. Um, but I remember getting feedback from Miyamoto-san. One of the first things he said in his review was he liked the sound of that ambience in the beginning of the intro level. And when he said that, I knew that uh, I was on the right path and I didn't need to change it. So that, and that became, became a very uh, key focus. Um, a pivotal aspect was having the chance to sit down with Mr. Miyamoto and get an understanding from him what he wanted to see, what he hoped to see with, uh, with DK. And he never at any time stood up and said, this is what it will have. This is your, your checklist. This is what I want, period. Um, he just offered feedback and guidance and mentorship. And that's one of the, the things that made Mr. Miyamoto so valuable as a resource is that he could be incredibly demanding at times. And, and there have been plenty of occasions where he just flipped the table over and said, start again. But he was, was you could tell that he wanted this game to happen, that he wanted to see DK in a new, ex in a new adventure. And, um, in fact, I'll never forget as we were wrapping up our conversation with him in Kyoto, he, he said in English, um, uh, you know, please take care of DK. He is my friend. Oh. Uh, no pressure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no pressure. When the guy who in pretty much invented the video game yeah. industry as we know it <laughs> passes that along. And, and that was just like a, a, I mean, it was like a beam from heaven came and hit us in the forehead. The, the one time I remember Miyamoto-san, uh, and he's really smart. He understands the design in a way that I, I've never seen. I learned a lot you know, from him over the years. Um, we were doing Donkey Kong Country Returns, and um, he was running into the corner you know, with, with DK. We had the DK package running early on, and he would kick up a little bit of dust and go into the corner. kind of. And he did this for like a long time, for like 20 minutes. And we're like, what do we do wrong? Or like, what is he finding? You know, <laughs> and it turns out um, he said, well, what if he was looking at the particle effects on the dust, right? And uh, he was looking for. He said, well, what if when you did this with the controls, Donkey Kong, you know, DK would blow <sighs> like that, create air coming out of his mouth. We're like, what? 
and, and you know, and we're thinking, well, and there, some of the team was resistant to it and stuff. Um, but we're like, sure, we can do that. And and the way I took it was that at the time we had DK's velocity, the big gorilla moving through the jungle. We had all that nailed, right? It was just it felt fun to run around as DK and jump and do those things. And he felt like a heavy, you know, powerful uh, protagonist in the game and uh, an avatar. Um, but it was missing whimsy, right? It was missing that playful sense mm. to the character, right? And so what Miyamoto-san was looking for, he was looking for just a little gameplay element. And so when he blows, his face makes this expression. This, it's really silly for a giant, strong gorilla. And he had his finger on the pulse immediately. He knew what he wanted. He wanted a little bit of, he wanted a little bit of flavor added to DK that was a little bit whimsical. To it and it just did perfectly it was just it was a perfect call um